Okay, here's just a little quick video because I'm sure a lot of you have questions about stuff that I have right here. Because I know I had a lot of questions about it. And, uh, you know, it's tough to find all the information. So here's just a quick bit of uh, what I got. So I have the Corsair 500R case. Um, as you can see, I have cross-fired 6970s. One was a 6950 before. The uh, BIOS was flashed and unlocked the cheaters. When the real one on the bottom, it actually runs much cooler. And I got that off of eBay recently for like $130. Um, instead of selling mine on eBay and trying to spend a lot more money, you can get, uh, you know, less performance. So I got the Corsair uh, 100 H100i as uh, water cooler. And I got the Thermal Take 850 watt. Um, power supply. Let's see. I just right now I just have a little the stock fan that came on my processor. The processor is a 4670K, and I actually delitted it. So I tried to do it with the razor, failed at the razor. I messed it up pretty bad. And I you know put a few swipes through the silicon, and uh, I, I saw some some metals and gold I was probably hitting, but. Put it back in, we're fine. I put on MX4 thermal paste uh, in the inside of the heat sink and on the, the top of the process of heat sink. And it, it actually, temperatures went up. So it was pretty disappointed. So I ordered the, the Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra, the one that's more, a little more thick. Put that on the heat sink on the inside and the outside too. Fired it back up. And temps were even higher, so I was like, "What the heck?" So I opened it back up, and I've I opened it back up about 12 times during this whole process uh, with trying, you know, the thermal paste before and after. So I opened it back up, and I saw that it wasn't enough liquid ultra uh, that it was barely touching the the heat sinks, both of the, the the copper block from the cooler, water cooler, and then the top of the the inner uh, heat sink block. So I put some on those two as well so now I had uh, both the liquid ultra on both sides of the, the bottom of the heat sink and the top of the heat sink and also the copper blocks and the real processor so everything was loaded I made a good connection after um, so it was great the temperatures instantly went down I was getting 87 degrees Celsius um, before the D-lid uh, at 4.4 gigahertz and now I'm getting uh, like 61 or 62 Celsius at 4.4 gigahertz so it dropped about 25 Celsius from doing that whole um, doing that entire uh, delitting and everything so I ended up going with the vice method <clears throat> I forgot to mention and that worked fine I just had to use electrical tape um, get a wooden block put it in there good first time it, it popped out of the whole thing i didn't have a tight enough device so i think you have a tight enough and not too tight though it, mine did leave a little marks in the size of the heat sink uh, on the processor um, so anyways i have this i don't have any pull or uh, push pull for this i just have it pulling in because i have two you know the two ones blowing in i have the side ones, the two side ones here, the front ones, they're blowing in. I got this bottom one that's blowing in, and then this back one, of course, is blowing out, and the two video cards are blowing out, and then, you know, this power supply is blowing out. So, I don't have the top as a exhaust, but, you know, it should be fine. I think I got enough, and I just put this little guy up, I think I was telling you before, it's the, the 4670K default one it just has it by that uh set little wire and it's blowing it because this one gets pretty hot the top one got hot hotter before uh, i mean it was hot before the crossfire now it's even hotter so that's an issue but i have my side off which has the 220 millimeter or 200 millimeter fan whatever it is blowing in so hopefully that'll get some new air in there it is getting pretty hot uh, here's some of the specs I have. I don't know if it's going to zoom in or, or focus. Doesn't really look like it. 
but I have is 1080p. This is Far Cry. Everything's max settings, you know, but anti-aliasing is at uh, 4x, and I'm averaging. This is like 60. Can you see it? It's like 60 is going to 70. I'm doing a lot. I got a 940 megahertz. Our, um, is my uh, my video cards CPU usage? It's not too much. Pretty happy about that. You know the quad core is still still working pretty good. You don't need six cores yet for games. Hopefully not, because I you know just bought this processor, and uh, I have this running at 4.6 gigahertz right now at 1.3 volts, and it maxes around 73, 72 Celsius and Prime 95. I ran it for like. 45 minutes and it did fine so I just stopped it you know um, pretty good I haven't really tried to get any higher because you know I have but it doesn't work you need to put the voltage up so I stopped messing around 4.6 is good for now and um, yeah I couldn't do the push pull because in this case you could see maybe uh, the cables up top are in the way they come out and also the the motherboard uh, and the ram would be blocking the fan so some some cases have a few inches above the top of the motherboard you can do it easier this you can't really um, especially if your motherboard set up like this which most probably are uh, but anyways the performance is real good I score pretty high faster than a GTX 770 and uh, you know, 7970 is faster than. I'm trying to think. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe try to add some screenshots of my scores somewhere in this video, or the process of the the pictures of, of me taking apart. But, anyways, the only downfall of the 6970 Crossfire works. I had to set it up with the reg, um, the reg edit. I had to go to reg and then Reddit or edit the registry. And that kind of was a pain, but you just go in there and change the setting, and there's plenty of posts about that online of what you have to do. That takes a second, um, a second card out of the power save mode, and what that did was I the reason why I had to search that in the first place is because I couldn't control the fan on that uh, on that card. So temps were getting pretty high, and it was coming up as you know zero RPMs or RPMs weren't changing. So that that fixed that issue. The RPMs not changing. Um, so originally I had one in here, I put it in this other one, and then Crossfire wasn't working, so I had to, you know, what the heck, I had to uninstall the drivers completely, reinstall them, and then Crossfire was able to work and be enabled. And I got overclocked at 940 megahertz, and the RAM is stock 1375, and it, it works pretty good, I'd say. There's an issue with with some of the, I don't know if it's, it's, it's not everything, I haven't tested it much, but sometimes Crossfire won't work if it's uh, in like a, um, a windowed mode. I tried to do the, the Heaven benchmark, the Uni Engine, or whatever that's called, uh, benchmark, and so I could compare it to reviews, and, but they, they do it extreme, which is windowed, and I, it doesn't use my second card for that, but everything else I do is just full screen, and I haven't really tested out like really video games windowed, but Crisis 2, everything max, runs 70 frames per second, 80 frames per second. This right here is max for anti-aliasing, and runs 60 frames, 80 frames a second. What else did I try? Um, yeah, I'll do some of the, the scores for the, the 3D Mark test, either in the description or in the video. And uh, that that might be it. Just, I'd recommend the D-Lid, this processor, if you get the 4670K. I don't really think there's much reason to buy it without D-Lidding it. You're probably barely going to get 4.2. Um, you know, 4.4 is real hot, so... You know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't risk that, especially even with the water cooler I had. That really didn't seem to help. It was getting in the, the high 80s, hitting the 90s, uh, the low 90s, you know, even at 4.4. So it, it was not good. 
experience. Um, anyways, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you. But now this setup works pretty good. Just a lot of heat and a lot of fan noise. So, you know, I figure I'll hang on to this for a while. And I'll, I'll let you decide on the scores what you think. If you have any questions, you know, leave it and I'll see if I can respond. Uh, the setup is pretty nice and I'm pretty happy without spending too much money. And it's also, I'm running Windows 8. Um, and I have the 13.8 beta drivers. Uh, with the, the the wind cap or whatever the heck that is, I don't know. If it's profiles. I don't even select anything, so I don't I don't know if that uh, that really works. Bam. All right, guys. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Uh, the last couple things I just wanted to add, I'll just put it on the video. This is the Corsair Link, and this is actually pretty nice because what it does is. It has uh, shows the pump. First, let me say that I, I have the clicking noise when I first start up my computer. Um, it almost seems like, I don't know, maybe there's no liquid that it's spinning, so it's clicking or something, but it does click for like a minute when it first boots. And the RPMs are down, they stay at around 5 to 600. And then after about a minute or so, it boom, shoots back up to the pump, 2200 RPMs and no more clicking and I have this this um, this set for the LED set for temperature so I see it uh, it automatically adjusts uh, not the best as a camera phone so it says a 31, 33, 35 it changes in color so when it's booting up it's clicking this gets the white and, and red tinted so that means that it's getting pretty hot because it's not actually pumping the water or doing what it should so I don't know, I might have to con contact Corsair about that. I've, I've heard there's problems with that. And you can't update your firmware anymore. On the web page, I guess there used to be a place where you could do it, but, but I guess people were bricking there, so I'm unable to do that now. Um, so anyways, that's pretty nice because I could also uh, put my temperature for the, the copper block. I put it up to the, the two fans that are up underneath the, or up on top here for the the cooler and if this gets warmer it switches based on a curve where is that right here a custom curve so the water block doesn't get too hot I have it set at like going from 28 to 35 Celsius and um, it doesn't seem to matter too much the, it never really gets warmer I've touched the radiator and it's never hot even during a test so Maybe it's for much bigger processors, you know, like an AMD that takes up like 200 watts, 220 watts. If you have it overclocked pretty high, maybe. But, you know, this works pretty good. It never really gets that hot. So I was, the custom curve turned down a little bit. So, well, I had the temperature up. So when it hits that temperature, then you know it's really hot. Besides that, it doesn't need to spin high. And this is cool because it's also hooked up to my video cards. There's my video cards and a custom curve. It has both of them here, both Radeons and you know it's nice to have an automatic because it never the stock one never works when you have a video card it always seems like it gets to the high 80 celsius you know and there's the video card fan never turns on so this actually i create a custom curve for this so when it gets up to the high 60s then it starts to kick in pretty good and it's based based on the group of the temp like there's the temp right here for the, the one GPU and then up top here is a second GPU. So these are the two separate fans. And so I'll show you some of my scores. Let's see. Um, so here is Fire Strike. This is just the, the free version. And if you could see my score is 7,030. It says two 6950s, but really it's um, one 6950 made to a 6970, so it's dual 6970s. And the scores, it's kind of hard to see there. Man, I didn't think it would be this bad. Even zooming in doesn't help. But the score for the graphics is 8321. So if you go to the score for graphics for a 770 right here, it's 7,700. So I score like 600 more points for graphics. And then the 7970 is faster. 
The 7 GTX 780 scores 9400, 9471, and I score, let's say, 8321. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty, you know, maybe 15% faster or something, a $650 card. So, I'm, I'm happy. Here's some of the uh, Uni Engine, Uni Gene, whatever it is. Valley, that's pretty high. I got a extreme custom, so it's 1080p with uh, 8x anti-aliasing, full screen, everything max. You know what I mean? And it's getting 60 frames a second, 2500 score. And this is the 3D Mark 11, and I score 10,596. And for the graphic score, I score 11,884. Which is pretty good because I think if you compare that to, uh, let's see, okay, here is uh, the link for 3D Mark 11. I mean, the graphics score, what did I score again? Graphics score 11,884. Compared to the so eleven thousand eight eighty four, and the seven seventy does it at ten thousand eight eighty seven. So this is a thousand point difference in the graphics score, and the seven eighty scores twelve thousand two hundred ninety one, and so I'm only, you know, what four hundred points or so out of twelve thousand points behind the 780 in this. Now I know for some of the, the new, like tensilation or whatever these new advanced stuff are, it's these graphic settings, they do work better. They're more efficient on the newer graphics cards. So those, you know, it gets a little bit closer when you're doing tests more tailored to that. So that's why 311, you know, I'm beating it pretty decently. And then the Fire Strike one, um, beating the 770 by a, a little smaller percentage of a margin um, but still not by much so just to let you know that's like only one thing the new cards seem to have a little bit better of and uh, I believe that was everything now I wanted to show you and I will I'll try to add the pictures in um, so you can see this is the 6970 two of them there and the clock at 940 Sorry the, the quality is so horrible to zoom in on the computer. I didn't think it would be that bad. But and also the game I was playing before was Far Cry 2. Uh, I didn't make that clear, but it was Far Cry 2. And and that's it. Okay, bye.